Welcome to the Proact Toolsets Lesson 4, Consequences. Understanding how to identify consequences that will help you reach a decision. This lesson covers the C, Consequences, in the Proact decision making process. Having identified our decision objectives and the various alternatives on which we will base our decision, we're ready to start making some choices. To be able to do this, we first need to understand the consequences of selecting each alternative. The lesson consists of this presentation, together with a lesson guide to help you define your consequences. In this presentation, we'll look at how to identify and describe a consequence, and then how to build a consequences table that will help to organise our thoughts. A consequence is what we anticipate will happen when we select a particular alternative. For example, the Peterson family have identified four alternatives for a summer holiday. Renting a cottage in the UK countryside, staying at a UK holiday village, a trip to Paris and Disneyland, or a package holiday to Crete. Identifying the consequences of each type of holiday will require the Petersons to project themselves into the future and imagine the experiences each holiday will bring. For instance, Mr and Mrs Peterson might imagine the children getting to know other children while staying in the holiday village or playing on the beach in Crete. So the children being able to play with others their own age is one consequence that the Petersons anticipate based on the UK holiday village and package holiday to Crete alternatives. As you build a list of consequences, check whether or not this list will fulfil the decision objectives that you identified in the O-step of PROACT. Using the holiday example, the Petersons realise that they haven't identified any consequences that give the two of them some time to relax together, one of the four decision objectives they identified. In addition, you may find that you have identified consequences that do not match up with any of your decision objectives. This might suggest that you found an objective that you hadn't considered before. For example, when considering the cottage in the Cotswolds, the Petersons find that they will be able to drive to Oxford and explore the city. In discovering this consequence, they realise that one of their holiday objectives is for the family to be involved in a range of activities. Whatever your consequences, write them down, because the next step involves fully describing them. If we don't fully understand the consequences of our alternatives, just how informed are our decisions? For example, a friend explains that everyone finds it easier to take the train when they visit her and that it would be cheaper than if you were to drive. So do you take the train or drive to your friend when you receive an invitation to dinner? Well, it's difficult to decide between the alternatives of taking the train or driving for three reasons. While your friend wants to be helpful, she's also being incomplete, inaccurate and imprecise with the information she's provided about the consequences of taking the train and the consequences of driving. Her information is incomplete because she hasn't described what a train journey versus a journey by car would involve. Perhaps she forgot to mention that she has nowhere for you to park your car. She's being inaccurate by saying that everyone finds a journey by train easier. How does your situation compare to everyone else's? And who is everyone? She's also being imprecise by telling you that a train journey would be cheaper. How cheap exactly? And how was she able to make such a comparison? So when defining your consequences, you must ensure that they're as complete, accurate and precise as you can make them. Here are some tips for describing your consequences. Try before you buy. A great example of trying before you buy is taking a car out for a test drive. The experience of trying out something can help provide insights into consequences you might never have considered. For instance, looking at an apartment brochure you're thinking of buying is not the same as visiting the apartment itself. During your visit, you'll learn about the amenities close to the apartment. Once inside, you'll be able to see where your furniture might go and whether there's space or not to fit all of your possessions. While the Petersons weren't able to try before they bought a holiday, they did spend time reading travel brochures, conducting internet searches and watching the publicity videos for the Holiday Village and Disneyland. Don't rely entirely on hard data. 
When identifying consequences, what you describe is of either a subjective or objective nature. The Peterson's children's happiness, for example, is a subjective consequence, while spending £1,100 on the holiday cottage and £1,000 on a holiday to Crete are objective consequences. While it's important to be as objective as possible, don't discount the importance of the subjective consequences in a decision. For instance, when deciding whether to accept a job offer, being able to assess how much you will enjoy it is equally as important as being able to compare remuneration packages, travel to work times and the amount of time spent away from home. For the Petersons, while the cost of their holiday and its duration are important, of equal importance to them is that the children have fun. Use common scales and determine their level of precision. To be able to compare consequences, make sure to use similar scales for those of your objective consequences and in the case of subjective consequences, a qualitative one. While working out the cost of each holiday, the Petersons make sure to convert all euro prices into pounds. They also agree that the level of precision that they would work to when calculating meals, activities and other costs would be using multiples of five pounds. With regard to their children having fun on holiday, the Petersons use a scale of one to ten to rate the level of fun they anticipate the children will have. Use experts wisely. When talking to others who better understand the consequences of an alternative, such as a financial advisor, being able to describe the advantages of one investment over another, make sure that you understand how they arrived at their consequences. This is important if you have to explain or justify your consequences to another, perhaps your partner or your boss. The Petersons consult their experts, the children, about each of the four holidays they've identified. What becomes apparent is that the children, while happy to play together, will each have the most fun if they're able to play with other children of their own age. Keep an eye out for uncertainty and risk. As you define your consequences, you'll discover that some of them contain uncertainty. Imagine for a moment that you have a large sum of cash and you want to invest it. You can either deposit the money in a fixed interest savings account or invest it in some stocks and shares. When you deposit the money in a savings account, you know, you're certain, that you will earn a given amount of money based on the fixed interest rate and length of time your money remains in the account. On the other hand, investing in stocks and shares brings with it significant uncertainty because you can't be certain how the companies that you invest in will perform. And even if they do well, you don't know how the financial markets will react to their performance. When you're unsure about whether a consequence will occur or not, for example, no one is certain how well those stocks and shares will perform, there's a risk that your anticipated consequence, making more money, will not happen. We take risks every day, from driving to work and risking the safety of ourselves and others, risking rejection when asking a favour of a friend, or making a sandwich using that piece of chicken that has been sitting in the fridge for three days. We take such risks because we've either consciously or unconsciously weighed the benefits of taking the risk against what would happen if we didn't. If you feel the consequences you've identified contain significant risk, take a look at the decisions during uncertainty toolset. For the Petersons, the only uncertainty they perceive is whether or not the children would enjoy the holiday that they select. Based on their experience of previous holidays, Mr and Mrs Peterson don't consider such uncertainty to be significant. Having identified your consequences, ensure that they are complete, precise and accurate, and that they contain no significant uncertainties, you're ready to pull all of this information into a simple and concise framework called a consequences table. Before you do this, check through your list of alternatives to see if any of them are inferior because they fail to meet one or more of your decision objectives. Before constructing their consequences table, the Petersons notice that of the four holidays they've identified, their week in Paris, which includes a stay at Disneyland, at £1,950 is way in excess of their £1,500 budget. For this reason, they drop this alternative. Construct a consequences table. A consequences table looks like this. 
Its columns represent our alternatives and its rows our objectives. Each cell contains a consequence that is based on an alternative and fulfills a decision objective. Such tables are created using paper and pen or by using a spreadsheet or word processor program. Use whatever you're most comfortable with. Creating such a table allows you to organise your thoughts, especially when you have a large number of decision objectives and alternatives to consider. As we'll see in the next step of the process, trade-offs, using such a table enables us to compare one alternative against another in order to find the best alternative for our decision. Here's the consequences table that the Petersons created for their three remaining holidays. As you can see, the Petersons have filled the table with numerical consequences that include cost, duration, time and an activity count, which are all objective. For their subjective consequence, they created their own 1 to 10 rating scale for fun, which they based on the opportunities for the children to play with others of their own age, the range of physical activities available, and any arts and crafts activities that they could take part in. While the Petersons used a numerical scale, they could have used a high, medium and low scale that would have worked just as well. Being able to make a decision involves understanding the consequences associated with each of our alternatives. Having identified consequences that are complete, accurate and precise, we can construct a consequences table that will help to organise our thoughts and prepare us for the final step in the PROACT process, trade-offs. There will be occasions where making a decision will involve consequences containing significant uncertainty. Managing uncertainty during decision-making is covered in the Decisions During Uncertainty toolset.